This farmer did the unthinkable. He found an eagle's egg and he brought it home and put it in the nest with his chickens. And the chicken sat on the eagle egg along with his other eggs. And after a while, all the eggs hatched. And the farmer was raising that eagle as a chicken. And somehow the eagle knew that he never fit in. He was always bigger than the other birds. They always scurried away when there was weather that was inclement, there was a lightning you know, bolt. They were frightened. The eagle was fearless. And there was something inside of that eagle that always kept him looking up in the sky. And one day when the storm arose, the eagle flapped its wings and it started to soar high up in the sky and it heard a squawk of another eagle and there it went to join it. It fulfilled its purpose. It was never intended to be a chicken. And may I say to you, there's some of you, you've been hanging out with chickens and you feel out of sorts. May I say to you the reason why you feel odd and at times you feel alone and you feel misunderstood because you're not a chicken, you're an eagle. And you've got to fulfill your calling. And so the first C in being that servant is you have to pursue your calling. And here we understand in assessing worth and value, it's not just calling, but it's also character. See, what Jesus was saying to James and John based on verse 20, when the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked a favor of him, what is it you want, Jesus asked. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right hand, the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking. You don't know what you're asking. You know what Jesus was dealing with? It wasn't the fact that they wanted to be great. It wasn't the fact that they wanted to be first. That's not what created disturbance. What created disturbance was the way they went about it. It was a character issue. See, character is the embodiment of your traits that's expressed through your personality. One person said it this way, character is what you are in the dark. And so we all have character flaws. Anybody in this room has a character flaw? Anybody in the room that doesn't have one? I've never seen a perfect person before. Please stand up. I want to see a perfect person. I want you to see... Jesus put it this way, a good tree brings forth good fruit, an evil tree brings forth evil fruit. You know a person by the fruit they produce. He wasn't calling James and John evil. What he was saying is that, guys, the way you went about this request, not only is the request misguided, your approach is misguided. He says, look at it this way. Jesus said, the people of this world, the leaders of this world, they're domineering. They are suppressing. They are heavy-handed. The way they deal with people is over the top. Not so with you. The people in the kingdom of God who desire to be great, who desire to be first, you got to serve. That's the attitude. That's the value system in the kingdom. And Jesus used these words. Not so with you. That means don't be like the worldly, what I would use the term, the outsiders. An outsider is someone who's not inside of God's family. So they're outside of God's family because of how they choose to live and the way that they've augmented their lives. An insider is someone who's given their life to Christ. And so they're an insider. Jesus said to James and John, guys, you're behaving like outsiders, though you're an insider. Which leads us to conclude that though we come to Christ as Savior and we become an insider, all of our behaviors don't change automatically. So we have to go through this character adjustment. Watch what Jesus did to clean James and John up. He then brought their situation into the light. 